I have been wanting to make this video since I started Cheesy Studios. And that's simply because, I mean, let's, let's not beat around the bush here. Power Miners is the best in-house LEGO theme of all time. Let's take a closer look. Seriously, uh, I love this theme. And it was very funny to me when I told my members that I'd be doing this for an upcoming video. I had, what, four or five responses of my members, you know, of a, a rather limited pool of very wonderful, wonderful people who I love very dearly, uh, tell me that this was one of their all-time favorite themes, if not their all-time favorite theme. That That's pretty high praise. This theme has obviously stuck with a lot of people. I think once you take a look at these sets and you'll see why this theme had such a strong impact over its two all too short years of existence. So for some background on what Power Miners actually is, it was introduced in January of 2009. The premise for this theme is that people living on the surface are experiencing a lot more earthquakes than usual. And so the Power Miners are an elite group of miners who are sent underground to investigate these earthquakes. What they found surprised them all. It was a bunch of these little guys eating what are called power crystals. It's like rock monster caffeine. The goal of the power miners is to extract all the power crystals to stop the rock monsters from eating anymore and causing any more destruction. An absolutely ridiculous story, so you know we're off to a very solid start to this theme. There are four main characters for the power miners. There's Doc, who's the team leader. He's here, you can't see him. I don't know why I'm pointing at him. There's Rex, who's the team's engineer. Yes, I got it right, I'm doing so good. There's Duke, who is the experienced miner on the team. And then there's Brains, who is the top scientist. There's five different rock monsters. And I've seen some people call them species of rock monster. Some of them give them just individual names. Either works for me. The red rock monster is Miltrox. The blue one is Glaciator. Orange one is Fire Rocks. The lime one is Sulfurix. And the green one is Boulderax. In later waves, we'd be introduced to larger rock monsters as well, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna be focusing on the first wave of sets, which includes seven sets altogether, six regular sets, and then one retail exclusive, which is number seven over here, Boulder Blaster. One thing that makes this theme really awesome is that it had a very accessible price range. In fact, all but one of these sets were under $30 retail. This is the only one that was over. So it was very easy to get all the rock monsters and get a lot of the sets. But hey, without further ado, let's look at the first one. Let's start things off with the smallest set of that first wave, which is set number 8956, Stone Chopper. This little set would have retailed for $5.99 here in the US back in 2009, adjusted for inflation. That's more like $8 today. We've got two figures included in the set. So this is really interesting. There are actually three vastly different looking Duke minifigures, and this is the first one of those three that we'll encounter. I'm not sure why the name Duke persisted, even though they look nothing alike. For the time being, instead of Duke, I'm gonna call this Bearded Stubble Guy. That's what Brickset calls him. All the power miners have really funny expressions too, for the shock they experience when encountering one of these guys for the first time. This right here is why this theme is so awesome. This is our first glimpse at a rock monster. This is Meltrox, the red rock monster. He does come in another set that we'll see shortly, Crystal Sweeper, and what a treat he is. These things would originally come in two separate pieces. The head breaks off entirely and connects to the body. The body is just trans red there with that dark bluish gray paint applied. It's a very good application. I mean, the colors are spot on. However, it does chip off pretty easily, especially on the high points of it. So you'll notice that all of mine, which are very well loved and used, these are my childhood rock monsters. Uh, they do have paint chipping off. 31 pieces makes for a pretty simple set, but it's a great introduction into what Power Miners is. We get the iconic orange and lime green color scheme, and we have a bit of a mining function as well. This is probably best demonstrated on anything other than a completely smooth surface, but as you can see, when you drive this thing around, the blades spin, that's because it's all just simply connected through an axle. 
and there really isn't much to say about the vehicle other than that. It has a nice forward aggressive pose, but it is just really a handful of parts. Uh, one thing I will note, Power Miners, like many other LEGO in-house themes, depended very heavily on stickers, and each of the sets we're gonna be looking at today all feature a number on the vehicles, which is really cool. I like the idea that you're building up a complete fleet. So of course, this being the smallest is number one. If you want a new copy of this set today, it's probably gonna be more like $30, but a used version of the set is much cheaper, more like $6. That's all for this set. For 31 pieces, it's a plenty solid introduction to the Power Miners theme and an easy way to get you excited about collecting more, to get more numbers added, and also get you excited about these wonderful creatures here the rock monsters. Next up is 8957 Mind Mech. This one is a little bit more exciting than the last one we looked at for a number of reasons. We get some of those wonderful new pieces that were introduced in the Power Miners theme. I want to point out right away, the dynamite piece was initially introduced with Power Miners, and this is the first set that has it. This is something we'll be seeing a lot throughout this retrospective. This is the first time they had switched it up from the original printed one by two tile that had been featured in many sets prior. Another great piece that was introduced with this theme is this roll cage, which shows up in a number of Power Miner sets and is probably still in use today. You'll notice here we have the stickered number two. We got two figures. So this is Brains, of course, the lead scientist of the Power Miner's operation. You'll see that Brains' torso print is a little different. I'm kind of amazed at how great the printing is. The colors are accurate. Brains also has an alternate face, which is very goofy as well. And then we have Boulderax, who is the green rock monster. And now this is fascinating because he's actually exclusive to this set. So it's good that it was such a cheap set. That's what I really like about Power Miners. This is quite a variety of price points represented in this first wave, and most of them are on the lower end. As expected of all these sets, it does have some mining features as well, a simple manually spinning gear in one hand and then a claw in the other, which conveniently can grab pesky rock monsters if they're getting in the way of your mining operation. There's a lot of vehicles designed to pick up or hold rock monsters, uh, and it, it's really funny. You can get some funny poses with that. Lots of stickers again. I believe on this set alone, there is one, two, three, four, five, five stickers on an $8 set. The last set had four stickers on a $6 set. You almost get a sticker per dollar. How great is that? Yeah, this is another solid entry for sure. I think for $2 more, you get a lot more stuff going on here than in the previous set. This, there's a lot more to do with this set. The fact that you can just grab the rock monster, even though it's not a very automatic process, is still delightful fun. There's a lot that can be acted out with just this small set, and I remember playing with this one a lot. This is my first Power Miner set, actually. Great stuff. I think set number 8958 Granite Grinder represents a pretty big step up in terms of quality without a big step up in terms of price. We're just going up another $2, so it was six, eight, and this one's 10 for 94 pieces. What's really fun about this one is that it has an automated play feature. You have the jackhammer in the front, actually goes back and forth as you move along. That's accomplished using the rubber band here and then a very simple technique on the bottom, some gears that push it forward as the axle spins. Very, very clever stuff. And it makes a fun noise. And it's a, it's a great motion. You can definitely grab a rock monster in there. It doesn't get better than that. Speaking of rock monster, let's talk about the, the figures we got here. So this time around we do have Duke, Duke is the mining specialist of the operation. You can see the drill there on his best. He has another <laughs> t funny, terrified alternate expression, which I think is fantastic. And then we get Glaciator, the blue rock monster. This guy comes in quite a few sets. He's probably the most common of the rock monsters, but that does not devalue him in my heart at all. The use of the transparent colors for these rock monsters, matching with the crystals, it's brilliant design. They're so funny looking and lovable. Uh, top notch character design. There's a reason why people love these things so much. Uh, they are absolutely perfect for what they are. I should point out too that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stickers 
on this set, which might be a new record. Pretty awesome. Nope. We have nine stickers on this set. It's worth noting too that this jackhammer and orange is exclusive to this set and this orange tipper bed only comes in one other set besides this. So we're starting to see some fun recolors, which you can imagine with the color scheme of lime and orange, you're gonna get some weird recolors. There also is another stick of dynamite here in the back to, as the commercial suggests, blow up a few rock monsters. The whole thing fits in his mouth. That's awesome. Anyway, I really like this set for $10. Literally perfect. Got your villain. It's got the crystals. It's got the play feature. Looks really good. Honestly, uh, it's a cute little vehicle. It makes sense. It feels realistic. Whereas maybe the mind mech and even the stone chopper, they felt a little bit more on the sci-fi side of things. This feels like a legit mining vehicle that you would see today. Even. And I like that about it. I like the grounded realism of this theme and then the absurdity of the rock monsters. I believe rock monsters are real. Let me know what you think in the comments. Next up is 8959 Claw Digger, which would have retailed for $19.99 here in the US. So this is a much larger vehicle than anything we've seen before. That's helped along by the fact that LEGO has introduced these new large wheel pieces that will also be repurposed as a drill bit. Many vehicles make use of these wheels. Uh, they are fantastic. Now, the main function of this set is actually quite fun to play with. I'm enjoying myself quite a bit right now. Uh, there's two, as the name would suggest, claws on each side, allowing you to hack into the cave wall in front of you, and then a scoop in the front to scoop up any crystals or rock monsters that may drop out of the wall. That's pretty much the play feature right there. There's a number of accessories included on this one as well. We've got a pickaxe right here in the back, which is framed nicely in between these two lights. Great engine detailing, something else we'll be seeing in some of the other sets as well. Uh, the, the greebling detail is really, really cool in some of these sets. In the back, we got a buzzsaw and then, of course, that wonderful stick of dynamite. Sticker count on this one, we might actually be going down a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six stickers. Dang. For our figures here, we have Rex, who is the team's engineer, or perhaps, as his best suggests, our demolition expert, which I think is very important for a mining operation. His battle-scarred face suggests that he's seen a few conflicts, but his scared expression indicates that the rock monsters are a challenge he's never quite been up against before. Speaking of our good rock monster friend, we're seeing here Sulfurix for the first time in Trans Neon Green. As a kid, I always wondered why he wasn't the yellow rock monster and why they went with Trans Neon Green instead, but looking at it now, Trans neon green is too good of a color to pass up on. I don't blame them at all. A new copy of Claw Dicker goes for about $50, but you can get much cheaper, about $20 used. In fact, most of the Power Miner sets can be picked up for the regular retail price if you get them secondhand. It's well worth it. 8960 Thunder Driller is probably the most iconic of the original Power Miner sets. I feel like the theme was made around this set. Like this was the original concept and everything went off from there. And th this sells the look so well. So this one would have retailed for $29.99, 40 adjusted for inflation, 235 parts altogether. So a little on the lower side, but these parts are massive. And this set being a little bit more desirable, if you want a new one, you're looking at $130, but you could probably still get one used for just over $30. Before we look at the vehicle itself, we'll just highlight the figures real quick. So this set comes with Doc, who is actually the leader of the operation, as his special star sticker on his vest might suggest. He is actually exclusive to this set. His alternate expression gives me the idea that he's shouting, Hey! Hey! Wikipedia again is trying to tell me that this is Duke, like everyone with a drill emblem on their vest is a Duke. He doesn't have Duke's eyebrows. Regardless, this is a really fun fig. I love the suit covered face, except where the goggles had been. That's great stuff. Again, another great scared expression on the other side of his head. And then we get another exclusive rock monster. This is Firox. This is the only set that he comes in. He's done in trans orange, which is another great combination. And I think trans orange does work better than trans neon orange in this case. 
He's got a crystal and there is another orange crystal included in this set. Firehawk being an exclusive figure from a desirable higher price set tends to go for a little bit more on the aftermarket, making him the rarest of the small original rock monsters. The vehicle itself, I mean, it just looks great. Can't stress that enough. This set has a lot of large pieces and even with that low part count becomes something quite massive and impressive. It makes use of those wheels again, I think I've just spoiled the action feature here. But upon turning the wheels, the drill spins. You can see it there. The back half spins in one direction, and then the front half of the drill spins in the opposite direction. And it's absolutely mind boggling to me. It's a simple enough mechanism, and it comes down to really good part design. As the inside of the drills are geared up in the mold itself to make this possible, it's honestly beautiful stuff, the way that this works. These were parts that were designed with a lot of care, especially for this theme. And it just makes me want to ram it into a rock wall and start mining for power crystals, you know? And then there's lots of fun detailing in the back as well. So there's a brick built roll cage just made out of ladder pieces, which are fairly common. We've got a crate for storing tools or dynamite. We've got all sorts of controls and dials. As long as you're not afraid of the fire, there's plenty of room for both figures in the back here. I mean, does Fire Ox really stand a chance against this? Maybe let's see, it's one of those power crystals. Perfect set, honestly. This is great design. A play feature that's way cooler than it has any right to be. Again, it's a very realistic, grounded looking vehicle, right? This is something you could actually see existing. I love that about this theme. Great design work. Price points up until this point, six, eight, 10, 20, 30, 70. Quite a dramatic change. And right off the bat, I mean, it was probably overpriced for its time. Adjusted for inflation, you're looking at $95 for this thing. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. This is 8961 Crystal Sweeper, the flagship set of the first wave of power miners. And by far the biggest. The next largest set is the one we'll look at next. With 293 pieces, this one has 474, which for $70 is kind of an oof, but it doesn't matter anymore because if you want this thing, you'll be paying $250 to get this thing sealed or 70 to get it used. I guess it still doesn't matter. Again, we'll take a look at the figures first. This time around, we get another engineer. Maybe it's Rex. He's got a metal plate in his head, so I feel like it's not the same Rex that we looked at earlier. Uh, it's too bad they didn't have special names for each of these guys, or at least a bit more consistency, but it's cool to get new prints, so I, I probably should shut up and stop complaining. Brains is much more recognizable. The only difference on this figure in particular is the fact that he has goggles this time around. The rock monsters are familiar as well. We get Meltrox again and Glaciator. The rock monsters have their one and only sign build in this first wave of sets as long as you exclude the polybag monster launcher. It does exactly what you think it's going to do and I feel bad because these guys are gonna get scratched up and lose more paint, but it's gonna be awesome. They're gonna have their moment of glory. Shouldn't do that anywhere besides a carpeted surface. Oh, I could hear him scraping on the concrete down there when he fell off the table. Anyway, it's a fun feature and it's kind of funny to think that that's their only way of defending themselves. Hurling their bodies at the well-armored lime orange vehicles of the power miners. Good luck, guys. I mean, I'm pretty sympathetic towards the rock monsters. They're adorable, even with those scary little eyes. The cartoons took any fear I would have had of rock monsters instantly away from them. I mean, look at them, they're, they're precious. That's all for them. They have a bunch of crystals here that they're after, but of course the idea of the crystal sweeper is that, as the name might suggest, it sweeps them up. I went at that pretty fast, a little slower this time. So it turns out I've just been grossly overthinking this. Simply laying the crystals on their sides rather than having them upright brings your accuracy rating to almost 100% with this thing. It's 
ta-da. There's only one thing it needs to do perfectly. You gotta line him up just right, right there. That looks painful. Yeah, he's screaming, that's not good. Anyway, if you have like a t I have a ton of crystals. This is gonna be a disaster. Let's see what kind of damage we can do. I'm definitely collecting more. Maybe this is a tactic. The hall. Anyway, I've spent way too much time demonstrating this feature. This probably took like 15 minutes to <laughs> I wish it would work perfectly, but it's Lego. It's a hard medium to make something like this. This is obviously something that doesn't exist, but I feel like it could. It looks perfect for this type of terrain. It's very well detailed. I mean, I feel like for the price, it should have been maybe a little bit bigger, have a little bit more going on. I wish there was a bit more of a command center feel to it, as it is the biggest set of this wave. It's missing a larger meeting area in here. As it is, you can barely fit one figure up inside this tower, which is which is fine. I'm glad you can fit somebody in there, but I wish which was just a little bit bulkier. In terms of stuff going on here, there there is a good deal of stuff going on. We've got two dynamite sticks, one on either side of the cockpit there. This actually comes with a properly themed orange bike. I think this is supposed to be a ramp of sorts. It mostly works. So I'm glad that it's orange, fitting with the power miners vibe. And we get two crates. One has a banana, which is fun. Of course, the power miners need to eat down there. I don't know where they got a fresh banana from all the way down here, but I'm glad they did. I'm very happy for them. On the other side is a crane with a drill for harvesting crystals as you drive along in the crystal sweeper. So much of the space is dedicated to that play feature, which kind of works. But the idea is that they are swept up by this arm in the front, which is activated simply by... Uh, a gear connected to the tread wheels here, and then it's thrown into this very much exclusive orange large chipper bed in the back. And simply by moving this up, you're able to dump the crystals out wherever you want them to be dumped out. Plenty of stickers all over the thing. Doesn't seem overwhelming for a $70 set. But then again, I probably had my parents place them over a decade ago, so what do I really know about the sticker placing experience? Looks great, doesn't work perfectly, but I still really like the idea and I appreciate the effort uh, to have something really unique and exciting for the biggest set of the wave. But we've actually got one more set to look at. The reason I have this one last is because it is numbered seven, whereas Crystal Sweeper was number six. So this one is unusual, mostly in that it was a retail exclusive. So the marketing for this one was just a little different. I'm still glad that it got a number. It fits in there cleanly with the others. And the next wave of sets continues where this one left off with number eight. So this one is 8707 Boulder Blaster. And forget everything you thought you knew about power miners, because this one is just built different. There is a very different designer working on this one. They wanted to go for an almost entirely studless look. And for the most part, I think it works. It's different. It's designed very differently than the others. Still makes for a very strong kit, but something about it does stand out in the way it's put together. We'll take a look at the figures here. So we get our metal headed Rex figure. And this is one of the only times that we get a figure without that familiar blue helmet. This cap doesn't work so great when you have a double-sided face, but use your imagination, you'll get over it. And then we get Glaciator in this set again. He's got two blue crystals this time around, as some of the larger sets tend to have. Just point out also that this set costs $26.99. Very random. But it has 293 pieces, so pretty great price per part ratio. But there is a lot of smaller pieces in this set to accomplish the more detailed look that went into this model over some of the others. The main feature of this set is that it blasts boulders, right? By launching dynamite at them. It launches them very well. 
just by spinning this. So there's three sticks of dynamite. This is a technique that's been used many, many times in LEGO's history, and it still works, so don't fix what ain't broken. In the back of the vehicle, there is a crate for storing tools. Rex has got a shovel and a pickaxe. I like the detailing in between the treads. It's just that two by two round piece, but it works very, very well. The engine detailing on this was insane too. The addition of the brown here is one of the other things that makes this set stand out quite a bit. Noteworthy in this set is the scoops, the shovel up front, the plow up front, I should say, in orange. That is unique to the set. They are on hinges, of course, so they can be moved around. Great for pushing rock monsters and crystals out of the way. Because of its rarity, this set goes for about 150 new or $40 used. So yes, that is every first wave. I almost said Mars Mission. Still got Mars Mission on the mind, I guess. There'd be two more big waves of sets before the theme. His life ended all too early. One more wave, very similar to this, just mostly bigger sets. And then one final lava themed wave where the theme kind of received an overhaul as the power miners went deeper into the earth and discovered lava monsters. I'm actually going to cover all four of the lava base sets in a future retrospective video because I do have all of those. While again, these sets are not without their flaws, <laughs> There is just so much good at work. The color scheme is so, so much fun. It should not work, especially for this dark underground sort of theme. And yet it does. Orange and lime, it's, it's absurd, but I buy into it wholeheartedly. And the designers, especially the graphic designers have, have leaned into it very hard and developed actually what I find to be very useful and experience enhancing stickers. For instance, I love the numeration of the vehicles. It gives this whole theme some sort of collectability to it. Can you really have all these Power Miner sets? You're missing number four. That's a brilliant big brain move on Lego's part, but it's fun too, as someone who collects this stuff. It feels like you're making progress. It's very satisfying. They all look great together, lined up one through seven. Same with the rock monsters too. How can you be missing one of the rock monsters? Um, but still, because of the prices of these sets, these were pretty attainable back in the day and they still are if you're willing to get them used, which, which you should be. Worst case scenario, you're gonna be missing some paint on some of your rock monsters, which which happens, you know. I'm gonna compare this theme briefly to Mars Mission, which was a theme that came out just a few years before, right? And note the improvements that have taken place when it comes to the design of the vehicles themselves. There's a lot of similarities, right? Mars Mission was a vehicle intensive theme. It was just vehicles. This is just vehicles as well and that. Um, but it's all stuff built on top of a Technic chassis. But I think Power Miners does such a better job of covering that up and incorporating the Technic into the build itself, where you get a lot more cleaner and polished looking builds, especially things like the Thunder Driller. And not to be overlooked, Granite Grinder, a $10 set, does a great job of incorporating a relatively complex action feature in a very polished looking package. At the end of the day though, it's the Rock Monsters. I love them. I love them so much. They make me smile. Look at, they smile. There's clear callbacks to the monster that of course was included in Rock Raiders, but these, perfect. That's what I will always remember from this theme is just how perfect it felt. And perhaps that's ridiculous after I showcase some of the flaws, but as far as a Lego toy goes, this was a theme that had a huge impact on me and my brother. So much fun to grow up with and collect these for the, again, too short of time. It was out on shelves. Will this theme ever be rebooted? I have no idea. I highly doubt it. If it were, I don't see why it wouldn't be met with a ton of success if they built upon this amazing foundation. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.